Professor, our founder, our lovely Dr. Rouge. She was on top of the world, founder of one of the most successful global cryptocurrencies ever known, and one of the richest women on the planet, worth billions. She had this unique persona, bubbly, lively, always the promoter. She was the constant salesperson. You can create a wallet. It could be on a computer, it could be on a thumb drive, it could be on your iPhone, and it gives you access to the digital currency. Cryptocurrencies is a glamorous product. We don't buy stocks and bonds in this way. People get caught up in the emotional excitement of the production. You all know, since we mined our first coin in January 2015, our growth exploded. Today, over 2 million users. No other cryptocurrency has as many users as we do. She's a great promoter. She's a good looking lady. She's colorful and she speaks all over the world on YouTube videos. So she really is the face of the company in promoting it. One of the world's most esteemed global management consulting firms. They hire the best and the brightest. And so when Fortune 500 companies need somebody to come in and tell them how to run their business better, they will consult with a firm like McKinsey. She learned a lot about Bitcoin and she wanted to be the Bitcoin killer. Cryptocurrency experts outside OneCoin are watching its meteoric rise and starting to raise red flags. There was a lot of online chatter. There was a lot of skepticism on the internet social media accounts, people were starting to questioning whether this was really a legitimate cryptocurrency. Ruja goes on the offensive. She said, we hired an auditor and we got glowing reports. There is a blockchain, it's all secure. All your transactions are on the blockchain. Dr. Ruja set the value of one coin and it was always on an upward trajectory. So she always wanted it to close high on the day, which is just completely made up because it wasn't even trading. But at the end of the day, when you went to bed, you thought, well, my investment in one coin's gone up today. If you're a customer, you're just signing onto your account and seeing these fictitious numbers and making you feel good about it. If you invested, let's say, 10,000 US dollars and two years later it's now worth several hundred thousand, you want your money out. And they didn't want to run on the bank because they don't have the funds to back it up. So they made it very difficult, next to impossible, to actually get your funds out. He would give them a statement at the end of each month, and he generally showed an 8 to 10% rate of return. And distinguished Holocaust survivor Ellie Wiesel, taking them for $65 billion. Which puts him at their largest fraud in world history. In 2008, Madoff's own sons confessed to federal authorities their father admitted their operation was all, quote, one big lie. They were given all these excuses on uh, slowing it down. We want to be able to create the exchange where you can get your money out, but we're covering all these challenges, but we're going to get it created. Don't you worry. In fact, you just keep investing more money. We're going to have an exchange where you can cash out. American. Law enforcement is coming for Ruja, too. That spring, Police officials from the International Law Enforcement Task Force, Operation Satellite, focused their gaze on one coin. The U.S. took the lead. The FBI is gathering information in this case in two major ways. If we follow the money through all the bank accounts and dozens and dozens of bank accounts, that's going to tell you the what, what happened. But you want to know the why. Why did it happen? What's the intent of the person doing it? What's the motivation? So the emails were the second treasure trove of information that was gathered in this case. They talked dirty, that is, they incriminated themselves. They were very explicit, calling their victim stupid, explaining that this wasn't a real traded cryptocurrency. We set the price, there's no mining, there is no blockchain. So by her own emails, her own admission, it just laid out the fraud from the inside. He had tattoos all over his body. He spent a lot of time in the gym, less educated, if educated at all. By all accounts, he's not as bright as she is. So a big contrast there. He started to become acquainted with the business, but he wasn't in an executive decision-making role. 
And then when she left, through power of attorneys and her blessings, he then started running all the different facets of the organization. He's jet setting all over the world, promoting the products. When investigators begin unraveling Rouge's tangled web of fraud and deceit, they're amazed by its scope and scale. She is the classic case of a predatory fraudster. There was no pressure, there was no lack of internal controls. She just had a whole cloth thought this idea up. OneCoin co-founder Sebastian Greenwood and Konstantin Ignatov, Rouge's brother and OneCoin's new CEO, both plead guilty to wire fraud and money laundering. They're facing extremely long prison sentences, and there's a carrot that's put in front of defendants like this. If you cooperate, we will make favorable recommendations to the judge and tell them that you've cooperated, and therefore your sentence will be reduced. It's generally reserved for violent criminals, drug cartel members, and terrorists. So in this case, it's a fraud case, but it's a four billion plus fraud case, and it involves an international angle to it. There's also a $100,000 reward for her arrest. So that's another incentive for somebody to go out and find them. 